So as I say, strong earnings. What stood out for you? The domestic uh, operations, for sure. We actually reduced unit costs year over year by two and a half percent. So every package that went through the network, two and a half percent less cost, which gave us positive operating leverage as costs reduced more than uh, the gain in revenue. So we were real happy with those results, which sets us up ideally for a good peak season this year. Well, how'd you do it? How'd you reduce costs? 2.5 percent. That's pretty impressive performance. You know, yeah, it is. Thank you very much. I, I've run a couple operations, and that's so not easy know. to do. I know. And uh, first, it would be our strategies. You know, we've really focused on e-commerce. We've embraced it. We leaned in because we knew that's where the world was going. And then we've made investments in automating our facilities, optimizing our dispatch, and uh, and just a lot of technology. And then it takes good, solid execution, which I'm really proud of our team for doing that. And uh, so at the same time, we grew the business, we operated at less cost, which caused us to improve operating profits in the domestic by over 25%. We're talking with David Abney, he's the chairman and CEO of UPS. Uh, so one of the things that we're always looking at is the consumer. So talk to me about your top line. Are you seeing any softening of shipments that might indicate the consumer is going a little nervous? You know, in the U.S., the consumer is strong, surprisingly so compared to some of what you hear. But we felt uh, very good about that, and we're not seeing weakness at all. We would love to see industrial production, you know, increase in manufacturing. But from the consumer side, uh, a really strong uh, showing. Uh, and talk about international. You emphasize domestic, U.S. shipments domestically. Talk about your international operations, because you came out of that part of UPS originally, as I recall. I did spend four years as the president of international. I really loved that experience. Internationally, uh, and we'll start with Asia, the biggest thing is, is trade flows and effect of tariffs and, uh, and the disputes going between the U.S. and uh, China. Uh, what I will tell you, what we have seen is even though China exports to the U.S. have reduced, China to the rest of the world has actually increased, not to make up for the difference, but to partially offset. We are seeing some rays of hope, though, between the Chinese and U.S. governments, and, and we're hoping to see that resolved. And then in Europe, of course, is Brexit and the concerns of Brexit, and also the industrial sector is is a little weak in Europe, too, so it's where we see. Give us a sense of the sensitivity of UPS and your earnings, your business, to the China trade talks. What's the over and under, as it were? If it goes really, really well, what does it mean? If it doesn't go so well, what does it mean? You know, China is a very important part of our Asian business, but it certainly would not be a big part of our overall business. So it will be influential We, if trade uh, really resumes in China then we will you know, be able to fully utilize our aircraft and it will make a difference. But it's not like it's the biggest area of the world for us. And, uh, As you say, you made a lot of progress on costs in part through automation, through use of technology. At the same time, you're dialing back a little bit on capital investment, your CapEx. Does that put it at risk at all, some of the increased efficiencies going forward? You know, it's a great question, but the answer is absolutely not. And the reason why is uh, we reduced but we reduced due to, due to the fact that we were being more efficient and uh, we're getting more benefit out of the capital that we are utilizing. And with each of these automation projects, we're bringing the costs down. So we actually brought down the CapEx because we were uh, doing it with a higher efficiency and spending less money and getting more. How far are you along in that process? If it's, if it's from one to 10, where are you? Are you at two, are you at seven, are you at nine? From the automation standpoint. Yes, from automation. And I'll just give the U.S. as a good example of that. We are probably getting about 70% of our packages through our automated systems today. Within the next year and a half or so, we will be very close to 100% of the targeted volume. So we are progressing rapidly, and with each building, the automation's just a little better. And so that's the exciting part. Besides your strong earnings day, you also made news in the C-suite because your chief operating officer, step, longtime UPS member, stepped away. Every successful company has a succession plan. Was he part of your succession plan? Do you have to change it now? You know, Jim, uh, by the way, first, Jim, 35 years, done an excellent job. And, uh, 
And, but it's sort of a natural progression that we, a lot of us, spend our entire working careers at the, at the one company. And Jim has certainly done that. He's accomplished a lot. Our succession plan, I've been the CEO for five years. It started right after I started. It's just really a nonstop thing. And we don't talk publicly about uh, who may or may not be candidates. But we have a deep bench and we have a good group of, uh, of management. Our leadership team is in good shape, I can tell you that. Yeah, I wasn't asking you to name names. No. I wouldn't expect you to do that. I was, uh, but, the, but, but what I hear you to be saying is it doesn't change that succession plan that you had in place with your board. No, it, it does not. And, uh, but again, do not want to uh, undersell the fact that Jim's done a great job for us and I appreciate everything he's done. So looking forward, uh, what's the big opportunity for UPS? What's the big challenge over the next year, 18 months? The big opportunity is technology and the way we're implementing it. We are absolutely leading the way with drones and our drone certification from the FAA. And we formed our own uh, drone uh, airline uh, flight forward. And that's where we see big, big gains over the next uh, few years. Do you have any update on the drones? Because uh, we talked when you first got the that's clearance right. from FAA. Uh, where are you now? Yeah, we've made a lot of progress. Uh, the first thing is uh, the University of Utah Hospital uh, uh, is going to be the next place that we actually uh, operate our drones. But today or last night, we did big news or announced big news. Amerisource Bargain, CVS, and Kaiser Permanente, all three of these big multinational healthcare companies are going to be involved in our uh, drone partnership. So we're very excited about that. You can't be the CEO of a big successful company without worrying about something. So I'll give you a choice, multiple choice question. Okay. Overall economy, U.S. economy, U.S.-China trade. Now they're interrelated, but which one worries you more? The uh, China trade, just because I think it's more topical right now. and. Uh, and we really believe there's a way to increase trade between those two countries. We do see some positive signs. Negotiations have to continue, but that is the one that is, is most on my mind this particular time.